Hey, what's up, fiber folks? Welcome back or welcome to High Fiber Knits. My name is Emily, and today we have our fall knitting plans. So, August has gone by in a total flash, so I thought it was about time that I show you some of the yarns I have in stash and talk through some of the projects and patterns that I am thinking about making with these yarns in the cooler months that are coming up. Now, I recently got a question from a very loyal viewer uh, who asked how I manage to keep my knitting practice focused when I am so deeply engaged with knitting social media and there's always new patterns coming out and trends and all of these like new and shiny things that grab our attention. And I thought about this for a long time and really what it came down to for me was still prioritizing the mindful aspect of the knitting practice, the planning, the sort of analysis of knowing what I like and all of those things, while also granting myself the flexibility and the space to follow new inspirations and sort of follow the dopamine, the excitement, the enjoyment of the craft so that I, I don't begin to feel like it's like a chore or an obligation where I'm trying to sort of like fulfill these wardrobe goals for myself. Of course, having a really well put together and mindfully built knitted wardrobe is more than just picking out your yarns and your patterns to go with that yarn. It's about how we're styling our pieces and accessorizing them. So I'm really excited to tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Anna Luisa. So Anna Luisa is a jewelry company that prioritizes really high quality but affordable jewelry pieces. They're also certified climate neutral. They're both water and carbon neutral, and their website goes into all the deets on that, which is amazing. And they also have vetted factories and they prioritize ethical manufacturing processes. So lots of really great things there, but as you can see, I think all of their styles are at the same time really classic, but also really contemporary and they have like a fun and funky twist. So when they reached out to me to ask if I'd like to try out a few pieces, I was very excited. I am somewhat of a jewelry monogamist, so it was a lot of fun to get to try out a couple new styles. So today I am wearing the Amara Mother of Pearl ring. And on my ears, I have the Amo, which is this blue drop earring, as well as the Onda Minis, which are these super fun and funky, like wavy little hoops. So, so much fun. I've been loving wearing them. You might have seen them a couple times on Instagram already because I honestly, I can't take them off. So if you are interested in checking out Anna Luisa, I do have a link in the description box for you, as well as a 10% discount code if you use High Fiber Knits 10 at checkout. So be sure to check out the Anna Luisa jewelry. All of the pieces are absolutely amazing. They've held up so well so far for me. I've been wearing them for about a month. So yeah, thank you so much Anna Luisa. And now we're gonna get into the knitting plans. Now, my friend Rachel from Night Sky Knitting and I had a conversation a couple months ago when last we like met up for coffee and knitting uh, about how many hand knit sweaters we actually need. Uh, I feel like I am building up a pretty robust collection. There's still a couple gaps in that collection that I would like to fill, but in doing my knitting plans, I have really been trying to think of like, there are a handful of sweaters, a good number of sweaters I would like to knit for myself, but how soon do I need those sweaters? Can I push some of them a little further away? I don't know. So we'll see. We'll see. And another thing to keep in mind is that there's probably going to be a lot more gift knits on the horizon than what I talk about today for the simple fact that I don't have many plans for those just yet. I have some ideas bubbling about, but things are always subject to change. Uh, a lot of times for me, or at least last year for me, 
gift knits were things that I tried to sort of crank out between some of the bigger projects that I was doing in the fall, but I might try a different workflow for that this year. We'll see. Anywho, let's get into it. My first plan for fall slash winter knitting is a sweater that I am pretty much guaranteed to knit. I'm going to be making The Hour Pullover by Sari Nordland. Now, The Hour I've talked about a lot before, uh, especially in my Instagram inspo and intentionality video, because I think it is just the most gorgeous, relaxed, but sophisticated raglan style. I've also talked about how that's a bucket, lit, bucket list knit for me because it is a bottom up raglan. So I wanted to be sure I had enough yarn for it, but I also wanted to pick a really nice yarn for it. So what I did end up purchasing and what I will be using for this project are these knitting for olive yarns. I have five balls each of the Knitting for Olive Soft Silk Mohair in Oat. Appreciate that for a moment, it's beautiful. And I have their Merino in Marzipan. I think these, while they're not identical, are going to play very, very nicely together. And this will probably be cast on sometime, I wanna say, not in September, Maybe also not even in October. I might try to wait until maybe late October, November to cast this on, but I think it would be really nice to have this finished by the holiday season. I think this will be a gorgeous jumper to have for Christmas. On the note of knitting for Olive, I do have a gift knit planned. I did go to the knitting loft with my partner, Adam, uh, quite a while ago now. I think like in February he picked out these yarns. This is Knitting for Olive's Soft Silk Mohair and Merino, uh, both in the colorway Brown Bear, which is this like really, really rich, I don't even know if I would call this chocolate, chocolatey. It's just a very, very deep, deep brown. You can see it's a darker brown even than my hair. So with this, he's requested a pair of fingerless mitts. I am probably going to do the Claudia Gloves by Orsa Knits because I have that pattern from when I tested it for her, but I will likely be modifying the pattern so that there's a bigger hand circumference. And I'm thinking I am going to do sort of a row of pearl stitches at the back of the hand and then pick those up and then cast on the same number of stitches to kind of make like one of those flaps so that it's like a convertible fingerless mitten for him. Um, Adam has really curly hair and so hats aren't really his vibe even if it is quite cold in the winter time but he does drive so I think fingerless mitts are going to be a very practical thing for him to have when he's going to school in the cold months. So this is a gift knit, but it's probably going to precede Christmas. Adam and I don't really do Christmas gifts. We actually don't really do gifts, but it's nice to knit for someone. So a pair of fingerless mitts for my partner in knitting for all of soft silk mohair and merino, exquisite combination. He's a lucky guy. Next couple of projects I want to talk about are some socks. And I really want to, in the latter half of this year, even though we're much we're a ways past half, we're, I mean, August, end of August, we really only have a handful of months left in the year. I want to focus on some ways I can do scrappy socks without making them look like scrappy socks, if that makes sense. So I have a couple yarns here. First one is Retro Zaria Mondim in this gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous red color. I would love to knit another red garment, but I have 
plenty of garment quantities of yarn to work through first. But I used this for my Selena sock test knit for Nicole from Professor Pearl. The Selena socks are a DK weight uh, textured sock pattern. So I held this with a strand of Gepard Garn Kid Setup, which is a silk mohair. And I used just over half of the 100 gram ball of Mondeem. So this is about half of the ball left. And they also have a lot of this yarn left. Now, Mondeem is 100% wool, but it is a sock yarn. It's got a lot of bounce to it. It's got a lot of twist in it. It's supposed to be quite durable. I am just knitting my first pair of Mondeem only socks now. So I am curious to see how that holds up without any sort of reinforcement from nylon or silk or what have you. But anyway, this is 100% wool, but it is a sock yarn. This is a wool nylon blend from Knit Picks. This is their Hawthorne base. They do have a few different Hawthorne lines. They have like kettle dyed and hand painted and tonals and a whole bunch. I'm not entirely sure which category this one falls under, but the colorway is Berlin Game. And it is mostly pink but it's also got green and purple and orange and blue and yellow and all the colors in it. So I thought that these two yarns paired together would make a really beautiful pair of lateralis socks from the Pom Pom magazine issue that, the 10th anniversary issue, lateralis from the 10th anniversary issue. I think lateralis is the pair of socks in the winter sort of half of the collection. I think that the red against the mainly pink and orange in this yarn make these a really good pair together. Uh, I think it'll sort of work with the stripy effect of the pattern really nicely. And once I've knit that pair of socks, the rest of these scraps will probably go into my cozy memories blanket, maybe a couple of mitered square coasters, really, really wanting to like stash bust and scrap bust the second sort of going into this winter. I might do another pair of lateralis socks in these yarns. So here I have the leftovers from the socks that I knit for my dad this summer. This is Blue Jay from Songbird Yarn and Fibers. This yarn is dyed by a woman in Stratford, Ontario, and all of her colorways are inspired by birds. And she does do a lot of um, donations towards sort of education around avian populations and conservation efforts. Um, and I do believe she also does donations to some LGBTQ organizations. I know the acronym is much more extended than that. I'm sorry, I don't know what sort of the current accepted full acronym is. If you know, please let me know. Um, but this was an absolute joy to knit with. My dad loves his socks. It's such a fun colorway. But I think as a pair of lateralis socks just paired with some Sandus Garn Sisu, this is the colorway white, should be good to go. I think if I were to do this, I would probably still use this for the cuff and toe if I had enough. But I think this would be sort of a slightly less contrasty pair compared to sort of this color because the Blue Jay yarn does have its own sections of, of just white. Maybe I'd swatch for it first and see if I like it, but a couple pairs of lateralis socks would be a good way to use up some of my sock yarns. Another sock idea I have to help sort of with scrap 
busting is to knit another pair of DK weight socks with a strand of sock yarn and some mohair. So I do have more San Nisgarn Sisu. This one is in the colorway cream. When I had purchased this and the white ball, I had intended to purchase two of the same color, but this one's cream, the other one is white. So that was a mistake. Um, but Francesca from An Italian Knitter and Anna from Brook Willow had suggested that I could still do this plan, but sort of alternate, sort of stripe the cream and the white sock yarn together and then do the mohairs. I'll show you in a second. Um, but I'm almost wondering if this Sandisgarn Sisu is a 50 gram ball. I got it for $6.50 at Unit in Toronto. Where's the quantity? This is Superwash yarn. It's 175 meters to 50 grams, which puts this at a pretty heavy fingering weight. I think your typical fingering weight sock yarn is going to be a flat 200 grams, or sorry, 200 meters per 50 grams. Or is it a flat 200 yards per 50 grams? I don't know, but anyway, because I got the Selena socks out of approximately half a 100 gram ball of sock yarn, I'm thinking if I just shorten the leg a little bit, I might be able to get what I'm thinking of out of just the one ball of yarn. And if I can't, I can always purchase a second ball because it's Sandiscar and Sisu, I'm not too concerned about how closely the colorways match because the plan for this would be to hold the cream colored yarn and stripe in a whole bunch of my mohair scraps. I have been accumulating a lot of mohair scraps from miscellaneous projects. This is Gepard Garden Kid Seta from A Hat I Knit for Adam. I have, this is the Kid Seta from my Selena socks. Uh, these I used, this was just the first time I used mohair playing around with it. Also Gepard Garden Kid Seta. Uh, these are knitting for all of soft silk mohair. This was for a hat I knit for myself last fall. This was for my Laluchal Test Knit. This is the colorway Pomegranate. This is, this is a really nice color. I would love like a full sweater or camisole in this color. It's gorgeous. What else do I have? I have the Lichen and Lace Marsh Mohair in the colorway Lichen that I used for my Monica Geller tee by Sari Nordland. I have the Dust. This is Squashed Plums from the Knitting Loft. Dust is the base of their like in-house silk mohair. This was from my Cumulus blouse. I actually have a lot of this left, so it might be something else. Lots of other things. I have the Aloft from Knit Picks in silver. This was from my Champagne cardigan. And I have a whole ball still of the Uma by Amano. This is actually a alpaca. 37% Baby Suri, 37% Kid Mohair, 26% Mulberry Silk made in Peru. I use this for my Stockholm V-neck sweater by Petite Knit. So I have lots of fluffy fibers, definitely more than one DK weight socks worth of fluffy fibers, but I think I can do some really fun color combinations. Um, this would be a good opportunity for me to do stripes for the first time. Um, I've never striped anything before, but I think I can play with the thickness of the stripes or if I want to try to fade the mohairs and see if that has a cool effect. I think it could be neat to just do like all of these different things in the same pair of socks and make them really colorful and eclectic. So 
this will be a fun little experiment. I don't know when I will get around to casting these on. I might wait until I am done my hour pullover by Sari Nordland and the gloves for Adam to see if I have a lot of mohair scraps from those because I do have some other neutral mohair so maybe I could do like a really neutral pair and a really fun and colorful pair sort of the same idea but I, I'm just content to continue collecting mohair for the time being. And so the next couple of ideas I have are sort of tentative sweaters. I might knit them this fall slash winter. I might not knit them this fall slash winter. Maybe I knit it in the new year. Maybe they wait until this time next year. Um, I don't, I don't know. We will see. Uh, but I have a couple of ideas brewing, a couple of ideas brewing. So the first idea uses what I still have left of this yarn. So if you've been watching me for a little bit, you'd know that this spring I test knit the Summer Souffle for Laura from Penrose Knits. And I made it for my nonna, my grandmother. And I used this yarn that I thrifted. This is a discontinued yarn, um, but it is just like a straight up 100% wool superwash DK weight yarn. It's the Hayfield traditional double knitting pure wool superwash mouthful of a name but I thrifted many many balls of this I think I thrifted about 700 grams of it and so I obviously didn't use all of it for just a DK weight t-shirt I still have six balls and the vast majority of a seventh left so I think this could be a really fun cardigan. There's a lot of DK weight cardigan patterns. One that I have in my stash is the Ginevra Tea by Fable Knitwear, but that is knit in a Pickles cotton yarn that's really, really difficult to get. And I was watching Brie from Brie's Knits and she was talking about how she really, really struggled to get Gage not having that yarn. And from looking through the projects on Ravelry, it seemed to be a really common thing that folks who couldn't get a hold of that specific yarn could not get Gage and the sizing was off and all of those things. Um, so I might not use that pattern. Um, another option would be the April cardigan by Petite Knit. It's really, really cute, cropped, more fitted than the champagne cardigan that I knit in January. So I think, I think this would be a cute, fun cardigan to wear when I'm wearing a very neutral outfit otherwise. I'm not a huge pink slash purple wearer, but I do have so much of this yarn left. Uh, I think I kind of have to do a garment with it because there is so much left. Otherwise, I'm just going to be doing like miniature scrappy projects for forever. And really why I'm leaning towards a cardigan with this particular yarn is because of some of the buttons I have in a stash. So probably well over a year ago now, I was in the knitting loft and very, very impulsively picked up these buttons from Pigeon Wishes. I don't know how well it's going to focus, but they're like these acrylic, magenta, colorful confetti buttons, and I think they will be a decent match for this for this yarn. I don't think the pink tones are exact exact, but I think once the buttons are sort of on the project, it'll look better than if I'm comparing it with sort of like this peachy 
Actually, let's see if I can. They're just sort of stuck on. So if I, if I do that, I think it'll be like a fun button that sort of fits the vibe, but isn't like, I think this would be too loud on almost anything else. Whoop. I'm not doing great at this today, am I? Oh. Ta-da! My attempt to show you a button. So that's one idea. I also have some Knit Picks palette yarn. I have six balls of this gorgeous, gorgeous colorway. This is Oregon Coast. Knit Picks palette is a fingering weight yarn. You get 231 yards per 50 grams. So with the six balls, I have two times six is 1,200, three times six, 180. So I have close to 400, 1,400 yards of this, if my mental math was correct, which I think is plenty for the, I think it's called the Cottage Cardigan by Jacqueline Seaslack. That looks like it's kind of a bat wing-ish raglan type cardigan. Um, it really appealed to me because it is a fingering weight cardigan. So I thought it would be nice because my champagne cardigan has mohair to make a cardigan that doesn't have mohair. And this is sort of where the dilemma of which knits I want to knit when comes into play because with the hour pullover by Sari Nordland, I've been thinking about that pattern and I've been in love with that pattern since I started knitting. It came around, it came out around the time that I was like a very novice knitter and that bottom up raglan construction was not something I was ready to touch. Um, in fact, I had been knitting for I think 10 months at least before I even tackled my first raglan and that was top down on really chunky yarn. So anyway, the hour pullover, I think I've sort of worked up so much in my mind as this like really gorgeous knit that I covet so much and I know it's gonna be so gorgeous in that knitting for olive yarn and the color is just gonna be so dreamy and beautiful but it is another DK weight fingering with mohair sweater. I have a couple of those now. I don't have a cardigan without mohair. I have my champagne cardigan by Petite Knit and then I have this like really thin um, sort of like cropped cardigan top made of modal from from Aritzia that I got like years and years and years ago now. I don't have just like a really casual, whoops, I don't have just like a really casual toss it on neutral colored cardigan that works more trans seasonally because the champagne cardigan is a heavy knit. That is supposed to be a DK weight, but I used worsted plus mohair. So it is very, very thick and it is very, very warm for me. Um, that and I don't know what my new school is going to be like in the winter time. I really only know what it feels like right now in the summer when we're all kind of liquefying because it's a brand new building and we haven't turned on the AC yet. Uh, but anywho, I think just like a very simple neutral colored cardigan in this would be absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. This colorway, if I haven't showed it to you too closely yet. It looks like it's a beigey kind of brown, but it is a heathered colorway. So it's got the purple and the orange and the green in it as well. Amazing. I am loving these Knit Picks palette yarns. I have the Iris Heather that I'm working on my Louvre sweater with. And every stitch I do, I'm like, this colorway is amazing. It's so good. I don't know what it is about Heathers that I am just so attracted to. I think they're just, they're mesmerizing. There's so much visual interest in heathered yarns. 
that like I think they're perfect for projects where you don't want to hold a mohair. If you do want to hold a mohair with a heathered yarn, especially one like this, I would actually probably suggest that you pick a mohair that is kind of off from the base color. So like for example with this one, I wouldn't go for like a beige mohair. I'd probably try to go for like a really soft, soft, soft peach or really, really soft pink to sort of extract the heathered sort of effect from this. Um, yes. I think the reason is that I love heathered so much is that I really enjoy tonal yarns and I really enjoy variegated yarns, but I don't know that they would work for me as like big, garments that are part of my like everyday wardrobe rotation. I prefer them more for accessories, hats, socks, what have you. Uh, but at the same time, sometimes, and I don't want to say this to sound reductive, but sometimes really solid colors or when the mohair exactly matches the wool, I find that that can look almost a little too commercial like I want it to look like something only I can knit and only I can make and I think you can find heathered stuff commercially but not often can you find like nice heathered knitwear commercially from my experience I don't know I've been rambling about this but oh, I dropped the ball of yarn I didn't pick up the ball of yarn that is a potential idea. I think a fingering weight cardigan would take forever to knit though. I acknowledge that a fingering weight oversized cardigan is a lot of purling with fingering weight yarn, but I think it would be worth it. I think it would be worth it. I think this will be like a new year cast on probably. I say this is like my fall knitting plans video and here I am talking about like February 2023 but you know what that's just who I am. It is what it is. So those are sort of the the current concrete knitting plans ideas that I have. I think it's important to note that when I am doing these sort of planning for my knits videos, I'm trying to be selective in the sense that I showed you a few sweaters quantities of yarn, but I do have other garment quantities of yarn in my stash. I do have like three balls of knitting for all of pure silk and three balls of lion brand true boo and those are kind of hanging out it's not like i'm sort of trying to plan for my entire stash at once because i think that can be overwhelming and i think that's when we sort of get into the territory of feeling guilty for not staying focused on or committed to a specific idea or project. I think even though I just went through a lot of plans and ideas, I know that not all of those things are going to come to fruition. Something else is going to inspire me and catch my attention and if that means that these yarns end up being something else, that is okay. I am okay with that. Some of these projects are absolute bucket list knits and will for sure happen. But at the same time, I think that in order for a reflective and a mindful knitting practice to work, there has to be iteration and there has to be flexibility and there has to be that room for you to change your mind because that is the point of reflection and thinking. You know, I'm not just thinking about this to make my decision and go. My priorities change, my tastes change, the things that inspire me change. And I want my knitting practice to continue to reflect that. So those are my fall slash winter slash 
current ideas for possible knitting plans that you could see in the near future. I hope you've enjoyed everything I had to share with you today. I hope you do check out Anna Luisa as well. Again, High Fiber Knits 10 will give you 10% off at checkout. If you check the link in the description box, it'll take you to all the awesome pieces from Anna Luisa. So thanks Anna Luisa for sponsoring today's video. And until I get to see you all again, I am wishing you health and happy knitting. Bye everyone.